Hi, DT Mr. C here, and today we're going to talk about sustainability. Now, sustainability is a really big topic, so I'm going to give you the key points now, but then I'll expand on them and give you more detail later on. So if you want to find out more, stay tuned. So here are the key points. Hang on, where are they? Where have you left? Oh, over there, right. Here are the key points. Currently, mankind is ruining the planet because we are using up all the valuable resources we have. These resources include fossil fuels, which are coal, oil and gas, and metals that are in the Earth's crust. We are also ruining the planet in other ways, for example, because we are causing pollution into the atmosphere when we burn fossil fuels. This pollution includes greenhouse gases that cause global warming. Another way we are ruining the planet is by throwing lots of things away which have to be buried in landfill sites. Sustainability in design technology means being able to carry on without causing permanent damage to the environment and so that future generations can also meet their needs. At the moment, we are not yet sustainable because we are still using up resources, causing pollution and throwing too much into landfill. Many years ago, when mankind started inhabiting the Earth, we had lots and lots of resources. We had lots of fossil fuels, coal, oil and gas. We also had lots of other things in the Earth's crust, such as metals. We also didn't have all the pollution that we've got nowadays in terms of things like carbon dioxide being pumped out into the atmosphere by car exhausts and factories. We also didn't have loads and loads of stuff buried in landfill sites. So, Mr C, what does the word sustainability actually mean? Well, that's a very good question, John. Now, to help explain it, I'm going to play a musical note and I'm going to let it ring out. You'll probably know from music that this is called sustain. <laughs> When you play it, it can carry on, it can carry on, it can carry on, it can carry on. You get the idea, you can carry on doing it. So, in design technology, in order to design sustainable products, it needs to be done in a way that we can carry on doing it into the future without causing permanent damage to the environment. This means products that don't use up all our resources, products that don't pollute when we're making them or using them, and also products that don't need to be disposed of in landfill sites. Well, that sounds really straightforward, doesn't it, John? Yes, it does, Mr C. But I bet it isn't really. So the first thing we've got to think about is making products from sustainable materials that won't run out. Make a product from sustainable materials. So, some materials are more sustainable than others. For example, wood is a really sustainable material because if you cut it down to use it to make products with, you can just plant more trees. Other materials like plastic are far less sustainable because the raw material for most plastics is crude oil and that's running out. Like plastics, metals aren't particularly sustainable. This is because the raw materials that we make them from, known as ores, which we dig out of the ground, they are also limited or finite, which means that they're going to run out. Metals and plastics also have another problem when it comes to sustainability. A lot of energy is needed to process them in factories. Most of this energy comes from burning fossil fuels, which, as we know, releases harmful greenhouse and other gases into the atmosphere, and this can cause global warming and other pollution. Clearly, we cannot carry on doing this because it is not sustainable. But what about the fabrics that clothes are made from, Mr C? Can they be sustainable too? That's a very good question, John. Yes, they can. Natural fabric. Just like cotton that comes from a plant or wool. that comes from the fleece of an animal like a sheep, are far more sustainable than man-made or synthetic fibres. Mr C, can we make some materials more sustainable? Well, that's a very good question, John. Technology and science have come a long way in recent years, and lots of materials that used to be made from finite sources, such as plastics made from crude oil, are now able to be made from non-finite or renewable sources. This makes them more sustainable because the raw materials to make them from won't run out. Also, there have been huge improvements in biodegradable plastics. Now, normal plastics last virtually forever, whereas biodegradable plastics will break down over time. The plastic that this cutlery is made from is biodegradable. It is based on starch, and when you throw it away, it breaks down in a matter of weeks. This is because bacteria attack it. Another thing that makes it sustainable is because the starch is renewable, therefore will not run out. There's still a long way to go with this, 
before these plastics become common in our everyday lives. This is because it's still early days and the technology hasn't yet caught up, but it won't be too long before much more sustainable plastics are far more common in our lives. Another way of making products more sustainable is to try and reduce their carbon footprint. Is that a carbon footprint? No. Is that a carbon footprint? No. Is this a carbon footprint? No. Oh. Is that a carbon footprint? Let me see. It is, but it's not the kind that I'm talking about. So, all products have a carbon footprint. It's a measure of how much greenhouse gas in total that the product gives out. Now, our job is to try and make the carbon footprint as small as possible because a big carbon footprint is really bad for the environment. Think about this drinks can that's made from aluminium. Now, aluminium metal comes from an ore called bauxite. Now, bauxite needs to be dug out of the ground using machines and diggers and things like that. So, the machines and the diggers, they need fuel. When you burn the fuel to power these machines, that releases carbon dioxide. Once you've got the aluminium ore out of the ground, to extract pure aluminium from it also requires energy and also requires you to burn fuels, which again contributes to the carbon footprint of the can. Once you've made the aluminium, it has to be transported to the factories where the cans are made. So transporting the aluminium to the factories also contributes towards the carbon footprint because gases are given out then as well. And then there's the factories themselves where the cans are made. They need energy, they need to burn fuel, and that contributes towards the carbon footprint. Then, what about when you've finished with the can, when you've had your drink? It gets put in the recycling bin, and then they get taken to recycling centres. Energy is needed then to reprocess that can into a new aluminium drinks can. Fortunately though, the energy that you need to recycle an aluminium drinks can into a new one is far less. It's about a twentieth of the energy needed to make a drinks can from brand new aluminium. Some products also have a massive carbon footprint when they're in use. Cars are a really good example of this. Think about the amount of work that a car does during its life and the amount of greenhouse gases that come out of its exhaust, all contributing towards the carbon footprint. And that's in addition to the amount of energy that is needed in the factories to make the cars in the first place. It's not just cars that have carbon footprints when in use. Think about your smartphone. Every time you charge it, you use electricity, and the likelihood is that that electricity has been generated by burning fossil fuels. So charging your phone also contributes towards its carbon footprint when in use. It's really important to reduce the carbon footprint of all products. For example, when making something, manufacturers will try and reduce the amount of energy needed. Another way of doing this is actually manufacturing products closer to where they're going to be used so that there's less need to transport them and therefore you use less fuel during the transport phase. And we can reduce the carbon footprint of products when they're being used. For example, cars. Manufacturers have made them far more efficient so that they need less fuel. We've also now got a lot more electric cars than we used to have. These don't release any emissions at all when they're actually being used. Obviously, they need charging with electricity, and if that electricity is generated by alternative means, for example, wind power, then this would really reduce the carbon footprint. A big part of a product's carbon footprint that often gets ignored or forgotten about is when it gets to the end of its useful life and it either has to be disposed of or reused or recycled in some way. Throwing things away is really bad for the environment in a number of different ways. It would be far more sustainable and really reduce the carbon footprint if products lasted forever. This would mean that we didn't have to use up all the resources making new ones, we wouldn't pump out as much gas into the atmosphere, and we wouldn't have to throw them away. But this isn't practical for a whole variety of reasons. No matter how well you look after something, eventually it will reach the end of its useful life. Think about it though, would you really want products to last forever? Probably not, because it would mean that you don't get to get new models of things. 
In fact, lots of products are designed only to last a certain amount of time before they break or so that they go out of fashion. This process called planned obsolescence is a big topic in itself, which I'll make a separate video about. So what happens when products get to the end of their useful life? Well, we've already discussed that we don't particularly want to throw things away because this takes Mr. up space C, on the site. Use sustainable materials that won't run out and also biodegradable ones that will break down in landfill sites. That's better. In addition to this though, there is design for maintenance. We can design products that can be maintained. This means looked after or repaired. If parts of it break, we can just replace that part instead of having to start again with a whole new product. An example of this is the washing machine. If, for example, the motor that turns the drum round breaks, then we can just buy a new motor or even repair the motor. What we don't have to do is buy a whole new washing machine. Also, we can design products that can be disassembled before they're disposed of. This means that you can recycle or you can reuse the individual bits more easily. Think about the stools in the science lab. They're made from a combination of different materials. They've got steel legs, they've got an MDF top. It wouldn't be possible to recycle it as one whole product, but you can unscrew the top to split up the different materials. And it's not just simple products like the stool that can be designed in this way. There's now a drive for much more complex products like electrical goods so that they can be designed to be disassembled before they're disposed of. This will hugely reduce their environmental impact. Right, to finish, here is a summary. Number one, designing and making all products has an environmental impact. The important thing is to try and limit this impact so that it's sustainable, so that it can carry on, it can carry on. It can carry on. Number two, try and make products out of sustainable materials that won't run out. Also, try and use materials that have been recycled or can be recycled or reused or are biodegradable. Number three, try to reduce the carbon footprint of a product. This means using less energy when making it, when using it, and when it gets to the end of its useful life because using less energy means burning less fuels, which in turn means you don't release as much carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere. Number four, to be sustainable, try and design products for maintenance so that they can be maintained, looked after or repaired. This way they will last longer and we won't need to use up resources making new ones. Finally, number five, to be sustainable, we should think about what's going to happen to the product when it gets to the end of its useful life. More and more products nowadays have been designed so that they can be disassembled and this makes it easier to dispose of or recycle all the parts separately. Also, make sure you watch the closing music because there's lots of other things summarised. What is it? Your tea's ready. Gotta go, my tea's ready. Chilly tonight, my favourite. Bye for now. Need you more than oxygen. I need you more than